You know who I feel really, really bad for? Oh, that's a big list for me. Matthew Broderick. Oh. It was really cruel of America to uh, pretend that he was allowed to have a career after Ferris Bueller. I think the more cruel thing is that he was forced to marry a horse. Do I really have a face like a horse? everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. We did it. We did it? What'd we, we do? We, we successfully started another episode. That's good. That's not the hard part, though. No. The hard part... The hard part is keeping it up while we do it. If they have pills for that now. I'm not using them. Performance enhancer is not allowed. I won't have an asterisk on this show! No. Asterisk. Today we are continuing First Kings, and we're looking at the story of Solomon, because Solomon... Is doing his thing. He's a brand new king. He's got to yeah. establish his thing. David was pretty bloodthirsty. Moses, as a leader, was supposed to be wise. Came off as a little preachy, if I'm being totally honest. Saul was a depressive spear-throwing guy. So Solomon's really got to find his place. So in this episode, we're going to see what his thing is. Like, if he was an Avenger, how does Joss Whedon write him? Probably really snarky, because that's how Joss writes everyone. Yeah. Oh, Joss. Which anyway, name is Joss. I know. Is that his real name, That's Joss? Be. Who the fuck names their kid Joss? They probably named him. They're like, he's probably gonna make a show about a teenage girl hunting vampires someday. Like, why? Why? Because his name is Joss. What make, else is he gonna do? That doesn't make any sense. You don't live in my head. Anyway, <laughs> today we're reading in First Kings chapter two, verse thirteen. Solomon's throne established. Now Adonijah, son of Haggith, went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. Bathsheba asked him, Do you come peacefully? He answered, Yes, peacefully. Then he added, I have something to say to you. That entire first paragraph was that that's what she said. Do you come peacefully, Hugo? No, it's always violent. And not by my choice. It's it's psychological. It's yeah. deep in there. Well, every time I finish, I just... I close my eyes and scream really loud. Some shit must have happened to me that I am repressing, and it's going to stay there, because damn it if it doesn't feel good. You may say it, she replied. As you know, he said, the kingdom was mine. All Israel looked to me as their king. Well, not really. In the last episode, if you'll remember, he kind of claimed he was king and was like, hey, I have some followers, I'm king. He wasn't anointed king by David right, or right, anything. Yeah. He just kind of has an ego... And the kingdom has gone to my brother, for it has come to him from the Lord. Now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. You may make it, she said. See, she sure to waited to hear what it was. Yeah. She has made the classic blunder. So he continued, please ask King Solomon, he will not refuse you, to give Abishag the Shumanite as my wife. And if you'll remember, Abishag was the young woman that David was sleeping with before he died. And by sleeping with, I mean literally he was like cuddling with her. Because he was cold and yeah. she was she was warm and supple. Yeah, and according to the Bible, it explicitly stated there was no penetration. It didn't use the word penetration, but no penetration was implied. Maybe it was just a hovering, hovering over the, over the, the it was edge gates. A little bit of outer course at best. <laughs> Very well, Bathsheba replied, I will speak to the king for you. When Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah, the king stood up to meet her, bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne. He had a throne brought for the king's mother, and she sat down at his right hand. How long did she have to wait for the throne to be brought out of storage so that they could talk? He's like, well, I'll get a throne for you. She's like, no, like, I can it's stand fine. here. It's, it's like, only going to take like two seconds. I'm going to get a throne. There will be a throne here. I didn't become king to not get random thrones. If anything, maybe it should just stay here for important people. But then there's two thrones here, and it's empty, and it looks bad. Yeah. We're getting a throne. So she said, Let Abishag the Shumanite be given in marriage to your brother Adonijah. King Solomon answered his mother, Why do you request Abishag the Shumanite for Adonijah? You might as well request the kingdom for him. After all, he is my older brother, yes. For him and for Abiathar the priest and Joab son of Zeruiah. Now this is important because... 
according to the Talmud, which is another Jewish text, you're not supposed to have someone who was in a relationship with the king right. get into another relationship with someone else it's unless a power grab. Yeah, unless they are royal. So, for instance. If um, Solomon wanted to get into a relationship with Abishag, he yeah. could because they're not actually related. But this is a problem because in giving Adonijah to the brother, it's like saying, hey, he has some sort of right to the throne. It's just not cool culturally. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, may God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if Adonijah does not pay with his life for this request. A no would suffice, but I see where Solomon's going. He needs to establish his rule after David. He needs to show that he's not afraid to kill motherfuckers for no reason. Like Fiddy. Gotcha. Or Ja Rule. They had beef once. They had beef? They had beef. How much beef? Enough. Enough beef? Like a 90s amount, or early 2000s amount of beef. It's a lot of beef. It was when it was when uh, Diddy was called Puff Daddy. That's how long ago their beef was. It's good for context. Yeah. Thanks, Diddy. Is he Diddy now? It was Is he like, Sean Combs again? It was I don't like know. during Rush Hour 2. Oh, that's good. Or um, Shanghai Nights. Shanghai Nights is a good movie. Don't you dare touch that movie. I don't think that's a good movie. It's better than Shanghai Noon. Is that a sequel? That's, a, that's the one that came before Shanghai Nights. Shanghai Nights is a sequel to Shanghai Noon. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I just know that, that the, there's, uh, there's a Wilson... Brother, and then Jackie Chan. It's of the Owen variety. Is it the Owen one? It Not is. Luke? No. You get the premium Wilson in this movie. <laughs> is he the premium Wilson? Comparatively, yes. It's the nose. And now, as surely as the Lord lives, he who has established me securely on the throne of my father David and has found a dynasty for me as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon gave orders to Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, and he struck down Adonijah and he died. That was... that was fast. We don't hear if Adonijah had anything to say, like, hey, I retract my request. Yeah, like, oh, I just, she seemed nice. Didn't think it would be this big of a deal. It was really just more of a, I was trying to get her on a date. See if she liked the same things, you know, get to know each other. Maybe maybe she could keep me warm. She was good at that. That was her one job. That was her only She skill. was thick for those days. <laughs> she had some meat on her. That's all they did. They fed her so she could be like a warmth machine. <laughs> Many children went hungry to make sure that she could warm the king with her folds. It's like a meat blanket. Ew. To Abiathar the priest, the king said, Go back to your fields in Anathoth. You deserve to die, but I will not put you to death now, because you carried the ark of the sovereign lord before my father David and shared all my father's hardships. Oh. Yeah, he's following through on David's last request, which was to kill a bunch of traitors at the end yeah, of his life. Much. Uh, They're not really that... I mean, they're kind of traitors, but not enough to warrant this, but whatever, it's the Bible. I'm, I expect it by now. So Solomon removed Abiathar from the priesthood of the Lord, fulfilling the word the Lord had spoken at Shiloh about the house of Eli. That's the, Interestingly, I, every time this comes up, I, I think it's good to point out, when people talk about uh, biblical prophecies, mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing they're talking about. Stuff that happens within the book. Yeah, and yeah. those don't count as prophecies, people who think they do. If it says in the book, hey, this is going to happen, and then it happens in the book, that's not a prophecy. That's a story. No, yeah, exactly. That's like, uh, you know, when Batman figures out the the thing with his detectiveness. Like, imagine... That's, that's how that works. Imagine in the movie Titanic, someone at the beginning of the movie was like, man, I bet this boat's going to sink. That's not a prophecy. And then it sinks. That's not a prophecy. That was James Cameron. Yeah, that's, that's... Slash history. Someone outside of the story knows what's happening and yeah. wrote about it and put in foreshadowing mm -hmm. because that's how stories work. Yep. When the news reached Joab, who had conspired with Adonijah, though not with Absalom, oh. he fled to the tent of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. If and you the... remember from last episode, the horns of the altar were basically like, if you hold on to them, it's, it, it should function just as uh, sanctuary does in, in churches for criminals. And stuff, like in the medieval times. Like Hunchback. Yeah. The cartoon with the with the sexy gypsy and the and in the sexier uh, Judge Frollo. Mm -hmm. King Solomon was told that Joab had fled the tent of the Lord and was beside the altar. Then Solomon ordered Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, go strike him down. So Benaniah entered the tent of the Lord and said to Joab, The king says, come out. But he answered, No, I will die here. Benaniah reported to the king, This is how Joab answered me. 
Then the king commanded Benaiah, do as he says, strike him down and bury him, and so clear me and my whole family of the guilt of the innocent blood that Joab shed. <laughs> I don't think he knows how guilt should work. No. And this is, by the way, this is a huge rule break. You are not supposed to break the horn altar safety rule. Yeah. It's an important rule. It's like, uh, it's like parlaying. Yes. In Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Parlay. I don't know what any of that meant, but I know that it was a good scene. The Lord will repay him for the blood he shed, because without my father David knowing it, he attacked two men and killed them with the sword. Both of them, blah, 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 you get it. Stuff that happened in previous things in the Bible. Yes. Joab killed some dudes. It's complicated. <laughs> he may or may not have deserved this. So Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, went up and struck down Joab and killed him, and he was buried at his home out in the country. The king put Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, over the army in Joab's position and replaced Abiathar with Zadok the priest. Then the king sent for Shimei and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and live here, but do not go anywhere else. The day you leave and cross the Kidron Valley, you can be sure you will die. Your blood will be on your own head. That's basically just house arrest. Yes, it's deadly house arrest. Shimei answered the king, What you say is good. Your servant will do as my lord king has said. And Shimei stayed in Jerusalem for a long time. Well, yeah, otherwise he was going to die. But three years later, that's not a long time. I guess. Sometimes they work on really big time scales, like people lived in 900, and sometimes they work on really tiny time scales, <laughs> like a long time is three years. Yeah. But three years later, two of Shimei's slaves ran off to Ashish, son of Makkah king of Gath, and Shimei was told, your slaves are in Gath. Oh, wow. Good. At this, he saddled his donkey and went to a sheesh at Gath in search of his slaves, so Shimei went away and brought the slaves back from Gath. Uh, if he has slaves, I think he could afford to, like, send someone to get the slaves back. Well, also, I, I That's people, so people often say, like, slavery in the Bible was different. I agree, but only on one really, pretty much one principle, it wasn't based on race. Like, it wasn't based on just color of skin. It was based on all, all sorts of oppressions. If slavery in the Bible is like, you know, the Diet Coke of slavery, why the fuck are slaves running away? You don't run away from something that's just kind of okay. They should do uh, a Django Unchained, but about Jewish slaves. <laughs> I'd watch it. I don't know who'd... Like, uh... Like, uh Mordechai un Unchained. And instead of Jamie Foxx, it can just be Woody Allen. He just vaguely complains about things. <laughs> when Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had returned, the king summoned Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and warn you on the day you leave to go anywhere else? You can be sure you will die. At that time you said to me, What you say is good. I will obey. Why then did you not keep your oath to the Lord and obey the command I gave you? Yeah. The king also said to Shimei, You know in your heart all the wrong you did to my father David. Now the Lord will repay you with your wrongdoing, but King Solomon will be blessed, and David's throne will forever remain secure before the Lord forever. And the king gave an order to Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck Shimei down and he died. The kingdom was now established in Solomon's hands. They said that last time, but uh... Also Solomon spoke in the third person there, uh, so I think that means he's definitely the alpha king. That's the way to do it, for sure. He's killed a lot of people so far. This is like his first day. He's killed like four people. Good for him. It's a three-year-long first day, though. That's how Jewish time works. Don't, don't, uh, don't check that. It's just true. <laughs> the next part is Solomon asks for wisdom. However, instead of reading it, I'm gonna read you the title. Solomon asks for wisdom, and that's what fucking happens. You're welcome. <laughs> he, yeah, he literally asks God, like, hey, give me wisdom, and God's like, since you asked for wisdom instead of, like, money or respect, I'll not only give you wisdom, I'll give you money and respect also. <laughs> so Solomon uh, uh, then wakes up. I'm not even kidding. They admit it was a dream, and but it's we're supposed to think it was, like, a prophetic dream or something. I don't, because that's not how dreams work. Was, I've seen Nightmare on Elm Street. It's just a standard wish story. You've, yeah. You've heard it a million times. And today we're going to end on... One of Solomon's more prominent stories. This, this is, is my favorite one, I think. This is the standard story that's there to show that Solomon is a wise king. Also kind of a fucked up person, but yes. he's coming after David, so what are you going to do? This comes in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. A wise ruling. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. I like how this story's starting. It gets right into it. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house. 
Oh, that'd be a good... I could see CBS picking that up. They're roommates, and they're also prostitutes. Oh, no, two girls. New girls, or two girls. Two broke girls. Basically the same show, but instead of hookers, they they were at a diner or something, and they're not funny. <laughs> One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby, and we were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. To which the king replied, you're really bad at prostituting. I know. Tell them to pull out. Oh, wait, no, you can't. In the Bible, it's a sin. No, coat hangers. Coat hangers? Or whatever. Sticks. I don't think they had coat hangers. No. So some sort of rudimentary tool um, probably used for farming and uh, self-abortions. Good old punch. Punch the uteri. Double punch. That's why you That's why you have the buddy system in prostitution. That's why you live together. I know. Punch so right in one lady you, cave. Yeah, when one, <laughs> when one of you gets knocked out. You, you punch her right in the uh, pork sheath. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. Oh. Oh, that's good. That's That's, that's why sad. You, that, that happens. That happens. Yeah. Pillow partition. Yep. Or don't sleep with your baby like no. that. That's not safe. No, your titties will cover its nose and mouth and it'll suffocate. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. Oh. Oh. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. So so what you're saying is that the the buddy you got for the buddy system prostitution, really stupid prostitute. Really dumb. Okay. Really, really dumb prostitute. Okay, because one of you is brown. <laughs> the other woman said, no, the living one is my son. The dead one is yours. I know because he's dead. The first one insisted, no, the dead one is yours, the living one is mine, and so they argued before the king. I think I think without those two lines, we understood what we, the argument was going to be. We get it, the dialogue unnecessary. The king said, this one says my son is alive and your son is dead, while that one says no, your son is dead and mine is alive. We, we get, get it. it. Yeah, so much we get this. Then the king said, bring me a sword. And then both the prostitutes were like, no, that's <laughs> neither of our kid, so we're going to take it. Home, it's good. Yeah, we can do like this a good. Thelma and Louise or lesbian situation. Like a reverse modern family. Mm -hmm. Except the kid is an Asian. So they brought a sword out for the king and he gave the order, cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the that other. That is the best decision. I've heard of worse decisions out of kings of Israel. Pretty much when you crack a baby open in half, it, it's like a lobster. So you just boil it. And then you have half a half a baby, and then you can scoop out its insides and just eat it with butter. It's so tender. Mm. A woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king, Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, Neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. She's really stupid. <laughs> She's the worst. This whole prostitution buddy thing is looking worse. If, we're, if we become male prostitutes, I've decided not to make you my buddy in case I get pregnant and you want to steal my baby. Oh. I have a man uterus, by the way. Muterus. <laughs> so dumb. Then the king gave this ruling, Give the living baby to the first woman. You know, whatever her name is, the first one. Do not kill him, she is the mother. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, they held the king in awe, because they saw that he had wisdom from the Lord to administer justice. So he, he tricked him. It was a trick. You get it. That was... Is that wise, though? All that is is... I feel like there were other tests that could have been run. <laughs> Obviously not forensic in nature, but I don't know. Couldn't you, like, look at its eyes or something? I, I don't know. Also, what if there was just a really overzealous guard where immediately after he said cut it in two, he's like, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> you... Jeff, every time we've gone over this, it's been, I'm going to tell him to cut the baby in half. We're not actually going to cut the baby in half. You have no idea how often the buddy system prostitution double baby thing happens. You said to cut it, though. No. David was my last boss. I really don't understand this. I don't understand not cutting things in half. If there's a thing, I'm bisecting it. That's a fact. He was a fan of symmetry. Oh, uh, so I think that's it. So right now we're still in the middle of our t-shirt sale. We've got over 100 so far, so that's good. But you only have a couple more days. I think a little under a week left to get those in if you want one. Right. 
Uh, you can always get those, but remember, we only do this a couple times a year, so if you want one and you don't want to bitch about not being able to get one till like, winter, yeah. uh, then this, make sure you grab those. This would be your time. Uh, you can also follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You can follow Jake at Bible Reloaded. You can subscribe to the channel, because uh, this is quality programming. Is it? No. Standards have dropped. I lied. I was just trying to sell it. <laughs> That's good. You're a good salesman. I'd buy a Kia Sorento from you. Oh. Only a Sorento, though. You can always donate to our Patreon. At uh, $2,000, we will do a Harold Penisman uh, uh, talk show. Yeah, and as we've talked about, we reached our Quran Reloaded goal. We're waiting on the theme song and the logo for that. So if you guys so, want to submit uh, a, a theme song, logo, or your failty, you can contact us here. And we will accept your submissions. Right on. So, until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded. Next week, we get two different babies, cut them in half, and then stitch their opposite sides together so each of us have a half baby. It's like when you get a golden Oreo and a regular Oreo together, like smushed together. It's like that. It'll be an excellent, it'll be, it'll grow up to be an extremely awesome baby. That's going to be a really cool crippled kid. Or, or two dead ones. Probably two dead ones. We'll or, keep them anyway. Or four half dead ones. Right on. 